imbued with the spells of the most powerful spiritual people. What problems could these burial figurines bring? I once helped an old professor. He was a very unique person. To be precise, he was a thorough scholar, exceptionally talented and artistically gifted. Once, after getting drunk, he wrote with his left hand and did it better than other calligraphers. To make it more challenging, he decided to write in reverse with his left hand. That is, while writing, all the strokes were reversed. After finishing, he flipped it over and let it shine under the light. That was some high-level calligraphy. He was a master among masters. Everyone was amazed, and they applauded. In the fields of culture and history, he was a top-notch, professor-level researcher. Due to his professional status, he had a collection of various historical artifacts. He had a very capable student, Shaoli, who later studied meditation with me and became my disciple. We knew each other well. Shaoli told me about her professor. She told me that he was crazy about his research on artifacts and history. She thought the professor had gone a bit too far. He even no longer returned home, and there had been several life-threatening incidents. Also, she felt that his complexion and demeanor were not quite right. His wife and his students thought the same, and they were quite worried. Shaoli hoped I could find time to check on him. One day, I was free, and Shaoli came to visit. I agreed that we visit the professor's place together. The professor's research place was provided by his university. It used to be a university-run factory. Later, the factory was abandoned. The exterior walls were very old. The paint was peeling, nothing had been repainted. There were a few large and lush willow trees in the yard. Nearby, there were a few large buildings that blocked the light. The willows draped over the research place, covering its rooftop. So, the place was a bit dark even on sunny days because very little sunlight could get in. It felt rather damp and dark. I was already feeling uncomfortable before entering. Shaoli told me that although it looked worn down, it was filled with rare and priceless treasures inside. So, we knocked and the old couple came and welcomed us in. The old professor still looked quite spirited. He had a grayish-white combed back hairstyle, with dark circles around his eyes and a poor complexion. He looked like he'd lived a tough life. Still, he was a disheveled yet very cultured and refined professor. His wife was different, unlike the professor. She really looked like a professor. She was dressed very elegantly and neatly, despite her age. She looked like a cultured youth of the May 4th movement. They politely let us in. It was my first time seeing the unique professor's research place. The first thing I saw was a lot of artifacts and antiques. But we weren't there for that, so we didn't look around too much. Then I saw a large painting-like wall. I knew it was an ancient stone tablet. It was a calligraphy piece by a Han Dynasty emperor. The stone tablet rubbing was enormous, with an imposing black background. The characters were bold, powerful, and elegant. After exchanging a few pleasantries with the professor, Shaoli, knowing I was busy, quickly got to the point. She asked the professor to show us the other side of his research place, so we moved to a larger room where over a hundred statues 
ranging from Buddha statues to figurines, were kept. It was a display area in tiers. The oldest artifacts were placed at the top tier. From the periods of spring and autumn, the warring states, to the Han dynasty, the Sui and Tang dynasties, and to the Song, Yuan, Liao, Jin, Ming, and Qin dynasties. There were over 100 statues, besides several Buddha statues of the Ming and Qin dynasties. Most of them were burial figurines. It was my first time seeing so many burial figurines in a small room outside of a museum. The most impressive ones had a somewhat eerie aura. The oldest clay figurine seemed to be from the Western Zhou dynasty, possibly around 3,000 years ago or earlier. The figurine's limbs were intact. Along with the body, head, face, hands, and feet, still, they were burial dolls, not real people. So, of course, they'd look eerie. They were somewhat like paper effigies. These clay figures were sculpted and dressed. Their heads and faces were painted. It felt like their shadows were flying around, like how it is in cartoons. They were not real people, but that was the feeling I had. I asked the old professor whether his overall health was affected by his display. The old professor didn't answer me. He just lowered his head and pondered. Then, his wife asked me if there was something wrong. I told them that from a feng shui perspective, such an arrangement might not be very auspicious. It could easily lead to negative thoughts or illusions. It might also affect physical health. Agreeing with me, the professor's wife then clapped her hands. She said her husband had been acting strangely. It was like he was another person. His personality had changed. Sometimes, when asked one thing, he answered another. For example, if asked if he took a bath, he'd say, yeah, I had dinner. That's how it was. His wife said it shouldn't be dementia. But her husband's complexion was getting worse, darker and darker. According to the professor, he was having the same nightmare several times. He dreamed of a young woman from ancient times, talking to him in his dreams. And it was always the same person. He then said to his wife, no need to worry. That was just dreams. I asked, did you always dream the same lady? The professor replied, yes. What does this mean? You see, he wasn't dreaming of someone he knew, but someone who wasn't related to him. An ancient young woman from another timeline. If he dreamed of her repeatedly, there could be a problem. The dreams didn't really affect him much. But he'd been feeling a bit down since then. And after dreaming of her, he'd feel completely exhausted the next day. With no appetite. In short, he'd be in a state of extreme fatigue, both physically and mentally. His wife said that he'd also hung himself three times. Fortunately, someone had found and saved him in time. Otherwise, we wouldn't have met him that day. You see, he was an old professor who was getting on in years. Based on what I know, as people age, regardless of gender, their young energy level drops and the energy associated with illness and aging grows stronger. With less young energy and more yin energy, one becomes more susceptible to malevolent forces. It becomes easier for evil to possess them.
The professor's old body couldn't withstand that much eaten energy. That's why he was dreaming about the same ghost repeatedly. His vital energy had been harmed. In ancient times, even in prehistoric periods, every tribe and royal family had their own spiritually gifted person whom they respected as a divine figure. For high-ranking individuals, their burial figurines were often enchanted with spells. Although the figurines were merely inanimate objects, they were actually imbued with souls. Sometimes, real people were buried alive as human sacrifices, especially in ancient times. The wives, maids, and bodyguards of the deceased could be buried. It was a practice filled with resentment. Some spells even made it impossible for the sacrificed people to reincarnate or find liberation so that they'd accompany their masters eternally underground. So, their souls were filled with even more resentment. People also hired these spiritual people to lay curses on the tomb raiders. For example, those who entered the tombs would die a tragic death. The most famous example is an Egyptian pharaoh's tomb. This text was written, those who disturb the peace of the deceased will die. So, more than half of the trespassers met with untimely deaths. It might sound like a coincidence to you, but it's not. It is an invisible force. That can cause great harm to the trespassers. Some ancient tombs in China were built with the quicksand trap. Triggering the trap was deadly. The experienced tomb raiders would avoid that. But not the newbies. As soon as they dug until a certain depth. Sand would flood the place like water pouring in. It was a trap that was meant to trap tomb raiders with sand. Victims would be buried alive and suffocated. There are also the tombs with the poison gas trap. The ancients utilized their wisdom to prevent future tomb raiding. In the past, tomb chambers were built underground. After entering the chamber, within three to five minutes, trespassers would start to get poisoned and suffocate from breathing in harmful gases. In the tomb chambers, the walls would grow greenish fuzz. It's not moss but rather something scary. I call it the green corpse fuzz. Trespassers would soon start to pass out, and people outside wouldn't know. All the new people coming in, they'd pass out too. The chamber was the grave of all who had entered. Such chambers were filled with wrong souls. In the case of a tomb being excavated, some of the unearthed artifacts could have. Souls of the sacrificial victims and tomb raiders attached to them. This is highly possible in figurines resembling humans or animals. The souls filled with resentment. Always hope to find companions or to free themselves. Many of the unearthed burial artifacts are valuable for their historical background or production material. However, without them being handled by a higher level master with more advanced practice, it's better not to keep them at home or wear artifacts as accessories. You don't want trouble you can't see or solve. Be very careful when getting such artifacts.
With this, I believe everyone will be cautious from now on when looking at treasures unearthed from ancient tombs. Later, at the earnest invitation of the elderly professor couple, I helped them with some ritual work. They also agreed to have some figurines boxed and sealed up. Some others were moved to different research sites for other professors to study. Some might have been sent to museums. The way they are displayed is also important. Buddha statues should be treated like deities placed in high positions and labeled to show the era of the statues. Avoid placing many burial figurines near them. It's not good to have items with ghostly aura overshadow the Buddha statues. So, wise arrangement is needed. They agreed to the adjustments I proposed. And I drew a talisman for them. The stone tablet with the calligraphy of the Han Dynasty Emperor was removed because it contained too much yin energy. Why does a stone tablet have so much yin energy? It was originally a tomb slate, so it shouldn't be displayed as an art piece. I attached to it a talisman I'd drawn. From then on, the old professor looked better. What I did helped him. I knew he was not well when I first saw his face. Those who understand would know at a glance. He had two very severe dark circles under his eyes. Then, there were several gray marks on his forehead, like animal claw prints. Additionally, the whites of his eyes were particularly red. It seemed like a red line was about to run through both sides. If the line was reddish-yellow, he could have had schizophrenia. Fortunately, the red line hadn't completely run through, so he was only extremely depressed. After I performed a blessing for him on the spot, the redness in the whites of his eyes immediately faded away. The dark circles under his eyes also became less noticeable. The gray marks on his forehead also almost disappeared. There, he felt a window to his soul had opened, and his heart was being nourished with sunlight. That was how he described it. He felt he must live healthily and happily. Over many years of marriage, they'd been through many hardships, so he cherished his wife very much. He decided to live well from then on. The old gentleman was a very accomplished person. He was healthy again after that. We share a very interesting story together.
Thank、you.